Hi, I'm Pat, and I'm 56 years old, live in San Marcos, Texas, and uh, in 2010, September 12th, I was involved in a kayaking accident, and uh, what had happened to me was, uh, it, was a, it was a week where we'd had a lot of rain, and uh, I typically kayak on, in situations like that because the river's flowing much better, and uh, the, this particular day, I had a good friend of mine, Bobby, his lifelong friend, that had come to visit, and we were um, interested in, in kayaking a part of the river that we were not familiar with. And uh, along the way, we had to go, had to cross a low water crossing. It was a, it was a bridge that vehicles drive across that uh, in high, high waters, it allows water to go over the top of the bridge, which it was that day. And um, as we were crossing the bridge, uh, right before we crossed the bridge, uh, I had fallen off of my kayak. And uh, unbeknownst to me, there was, um, there were pipes underneath the bridge. And uh, as I fell off my kayak, I was calm and just felt like everything was gonna be fine and just get over to the shallow part of the river and get back on my kayak. And as I'm dropping off the kayak and going into the water, I get about thigh deep and um, it just feels like a, a giant hand grabbed me by the ankles and just jerked me under the water. And uh, I, I've, just it, there was nothing I could do about it. The force of the pull was so strong I couldn't fight it. And uh, as I'm pulled down, I thought maybe I was getting pulled into a uh, a washout under the bridge. And as I was being pulled under water, I felt a uh, a bump on the back of my hands, and uh, I recognized that as being a corrugated pipe. So I knew right away that I was inside of a pipe. And uh, when that happened, I I forced my hands up and forced my feet down and I was able to stop myself inside of this pipe that was under underneath the bridge. And uh, uh, when this happened, I was already about uh, eight or 10 feet underneath the, underneath the bridge and the pipe when I was able to stop myself. And uh, I looked over my shoulder and it was just dark. It was just, you know, no light at all that direction. And uh, I was afraid that there might be barbed wire or or a metal post or logs or rocks, something obstructing the, the exit of the pipe. And I, I felt like my only option was to try to go forward where I saw the light, the way I'd come in. And so uh, just with all the strength I had, I started pushing forward, uh, tiny little steps, maybe three, four inches at a time, I pushed myself forward. And um, thinking that if I let go and I got trapped at the back of the pipe that that, that there you know that I wouldn't survive it so I'm pushing myself forward and uh, the whole time this is happening I'm, I'm praying I'm praying for God to look after me if I would die that he would take me to heaven I'm thinking about my children and my wife and uh, I'm just thinking about surviving and uh, and in a a situation like this, your senses become heightened. Uh, I could see tiny, tiny specks of, of dirt floating through the water and going by my head. I could, I could hear everything. I could hear different sounds all at one time. Uh, you know, I could feel all the water around me and on me. And, uh, and, and everything slows down. It's like in slow motion. You have you have detailed thoughts in, in milliseconds. And so as I push my, my way forward, those are the three things I'm thinking about is surviving, my family, and, and praying. As I get to the front of the pipe, I made it up all the way to the front of the pipe, I grab onto the outside of the pipe with both hands and I try to pull myself out. But at this point, the water, the force of the water is so strong at the front of the pipe, I can't get, I can't get out of the pipe. I, tried to push my head out, I tried to push my shoulder out, anything, and, and it's, it's just not working. I couldn't get my body or any part of my body out of the pipe. And about that time, I saw my friend Bobby, his hand come through the water towards me, and it was probably, his hand probably stopped about a foot and a half above the pipe. He was on top of the bridge reaching down towards me. And uh, anyway, 
I reached up and I touched it, I grabbed his hand, and there's no, no replacement, nothing else feels or gives you the comfort that the touch of another human being does. It just instantly gave me hope, and, and I felt like, okay, this is all I need, just a, a, a little pull from Bobby, and, and I'm, I'm getting out of here. So I pulled Bobby's hand to pull myself out, and when I did, our hands came apart. And when that happened, I lost my grip with my other hand, and I was pushed back into the pipe a second time. This time, I was only pushed back into the pipe about about six feet, not quite as far as I was was in the pipe the first time. And uh, I thought, I thought, well, you know, I know I can make it to the front of the pipe again. I've done it. I knew I could do it because I've already done it once. But the problem was, I thought. I've been underwater for a long time and I didn't know how much longer I could hold my breath. And uh, I started pushing forward. And I had the same thoughts, you know, just about survival and primary thought on, on my mind was my family, especially my children. And um, as I uh, started pushing forward, I made it a couple of feet and just, just like flipping off a light switch in your home, uh, I went unconscious just immediately, but just prior to going unconscious, I just I just felt this like a bubble is the best way I can describe it. Just a, a bubble surrounded me, and I just felt I just felt peace, and I knew no matter what happened to me, that that my family would be taken care of, and and that everything in the world was was okay, and 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 I it was just a total. A total sense of peace and knowing that that uh, with or without me that, that things would be fine and uh, at that moment I when I passed out I went into a different a different realm a different place uh, I, w I was myself uh, I, I was totally conscious just had the same the same thoughts that I had on earth but I was in a um, you know like the best way I can describe it, it was like being in a, almost like a cave, and I was, uh, but the cave, the sides of the cave were this soft, soft, deep black, and the the sides of the walls were were like f covered with felt or velvet, and uh, and instantly my first thought, and it's a conscious thought, just like you have here on Earth, is I, I just felt multiple just you know, thousands, millions of people, souls. I knew they were, I didn't see them, but I knew they were there. And it was just, you know, I couldn't even tell you how many it was, but it was a lot of, sensed a lot of, a lot of other beings there. And uh, immediately I had a conscious thought of, man, you gotta be really bad not to, not to get to come here because I didn't feel like I'd been that good a person. And I was in heaven. I felt like I was in heaven. There was no sign there saying heaven, but I just, I felt the love, I felt the forgiveness, I felt the peace. I knew, I knew that was the place I was at. And in front of me, uh, probably at a distance of about 75 yards, there was a, a wall and it was made out of blue stained glass. And there was a, a bright, bright light behind it. And there was a hole in the stained glass. Uh, as if somebody had thrown a rock through it, it wasn't a perfectly round hole. It had edges to it, and there were beams coming off the edges with this bright light shining through the through the hole, and kind of kind of looked like looking at a kaleidoscope because the 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 light kind of flickered and changed, and and I and I knew I wanted to get to the light, but I couldn't go there uh, at my own speed. I was just being drawn to the light very slowly, and. Uh, and during this time, there was no there was no verbal communication, but I felt the sense of I felt the sense of total love, total peace. Uh, I had no physical feeling of, of any body, no of, of having a body. I didn't I didn't feel like the sense of clothes touching my body. It was just like it was just like having my consciousness without having a body attached to it. It was just total relaxation. Uh, that, that you don't ex experience here on earth. And um, I felt this cl just, just clean being forgiven and a, a, a cleaning of my soul. 
as I pulled towards pulled towards the light, I got closer. I recognized that the uh, uh, the delusion of the light being like a kaleidoscope was uh, the was figures were people walking back and forth in front of the, in front of the light. As I got closer to it, I tried to make out who they were. I never could because the light was so bright behind them. All I could ever make out was silhouettes, but it was people that were walking back and forth in front of the light. And at that point, the next recollection that I have is my face going up and down towards rocks in the water. And at that moment, the first sensation I had was my friend Bobby's arms around my uh, upper part of my stomach, lower part of my chest. And he was raising me up and down, uh, which was basically a uh, was effectively uh, giving me CPR, and uh, and I regained consciousness, and uh, put my hands and feet on the ground and stabilized myself. And when I did that, Bobby just was in total shock and was kissing me and hugging me and telling me he loved me, and then and then cursing at me and yelling at me, and he was in total shock. But uh, at that point, just immediately, once I regained consciousness, I knew that my life was never going to be the same. I knew that, uh, I knew where I'd been. I, I knew what I'd, I, I know, it's, it's a knowing, it's not just a faith or a belief. I know that there was a heaven, I know that there was a God. I know I've been there, I know I'm going to go back. And uh, I know that I'm here for a purpose. And that's to love God with all my heart, mind, and soul, and to love, love all of humanity in any way that I can.